So I wanted to do a video of some recent research I did on downloading precipitation data from you from NOAA NOAA's website. This is that website. Um, you can download it by days. The, the important thing here though is <clears throat> the GeoTIFFs that you download are multiple band TIFF files and you want to use band one. And then I use QGIS so they make symbology files and that's really handy too. So I downloaded those. So basically what I did was I created, you know, they're out there by links and I analyzed the link, but in this spreadsheet I developed a, a a way to automate the URLs that I want to download. So I put the date here in the same format and it creates the download link. So I download, I click and download all these links into a folder. And then what I do is I attach those files. I only want CONUS in this example. I only need CONUS in this example. So those are the ones I'm going to select. And there's 11 of them. And those are the ones that I want to make sure are correct. And then I got 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. From the 19th to the 28th. Then you go to the raster calculator. And in the raster calculator, here's where you select the band. So you want to make sure you get band 1 on all of these. And then you want to make sure you got all of them, 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. <clears throat> and what I do is I copy those to Notepad, and then I just replace the double quotes with a plus in the middle so I don't have to <clears throat> actually hit that plus sign. Then I copy that. Oops. Then I copy that and paste it in here. And I run that program. I'm going to run it just as an example. I've already ran it. I'm going to do merge to. And I merge those files. So you don't see too much when you first bring that in, but if you go here and you tell it to, not to look at all the negative values, but just look at uh, all the positive values, <clears throat> this is all those days added together using the raster calculator. And then what we're going to do is go through the process of how I use these, and um, then I'll show you the tool I made to, to facilitate that. Okay, so now I want to manipulate this and use it for specific state areas. So the example I want to do, I'm going to pull down a, some states in the state layer. And this is a really good example because when I turn these on, <clears throat> see how it, it doesn't think that this um, the initial file that we connected to this G QGIS project, it's not projected in, in a system or in a known CRS. And if you look at that, it has a system that's called NOAA HRAP Grid. Now, that's not a projection that is known to GIS systems. But when I connected this state layer just now, um, if I right, right, right mouse click on this state layer, 
it says it is a NAD83 based system and it lines up extremely well and it makes sense that it's a NAD83 system for NOAA to publish it that way. It's probably raw data coming from uh, satellites and it's an automated process but I'm going to make the assumption that NAD83 will work well for what I'm doing and that's what I've done in this process. The other thing I want to do is I want to select my states I'm going to use for this example. So I'm going to highlight these two states here and export them as features. So it's saving them as NAT83. I'm just saving save selected features only. Turn them off and now I have these. <clears throat> okay. So now I'm trying to think of what I want to do because I think I have everything to run my model. Um, so I created a test model that um, went through the steps that I figured out for doing this. So I'm using my merge layers, I'm using my boundaries, um, my boundary vector layer, in this case it's West Virginia and Kentucky. And basically if you go through this it does an extract for the raster creates a buffer on those boundaries and dissolves those files. It does a clip and then it changes the um, raster. It resamples the raster data to make it more mm, preci uh, precise in the word. It makes it more visually appealing at a smaller scale. And then it clips it again based on the dissolved boundary of those states. So let me show you how that works. So right now my boundary layer is Kentucky and West Virginia. I'm going to buffer it in map units, which in this case is decimal degrees. And I use 0 0.08. And I want to select the merge raster. And I'm and I can pick another CRS here. I would recommend that it be a NAD83, in this case, UTM zone. I'm using 17 North because it, it looks pretty good with our states. And then here's the results. So it's, it's basically doing all the commands that I figured out manually. Um, extracting that, you know, unprojected layer, using a, a state layer that has, you know, it's based on NAT83 also. Um, it's buffer creating the buffer file. It's exporting a TIFF, smaller TIFF file for those two states. Um, it's resampling that data and reprojecting it to um, the UTM zone 17. And then it's creating the output. And this, <clears throat> this takes a little, a little bit of time mainly because you know it's two states but it, it's going to work no matter how many states that you pick it, it'll definitely take longer time if you pick more states um, the the initial state I practiced on was West Virginia and it's pretty compact and it exported it pretty quick two states including Kentucky you can see it takes a little bit longer but uh, but that's the stuff you would you, it would have taken you longer if you would have been doing it by hand. So this is a very great way to, um, you know, facilitate these processes and document them. To me, that's what the, the main purpose is. Um, you create processes within, you know, the, the concept of water resource management and emergency management processes. And you document them and you use them document them and use them over. You teach other people how to use them. So that's the importance of this. Ah, it's not too bad. Not too bad, really. So let's see if um, 
everything came out okay there we go and if I zoom into that you can see that it's very uh, I'm going to change my actual project to UTM zone 17 so you can see what that looks like and then I'm going to add those symbology files published by NOAA and since this is 11 days I'm going to pick 14 day uh, class and here's what it looks like I'm going to turn on my state layers I'm going to bump up my border a little bit and there we have it <clears throat> the results I didn't lift too many fingers or buttons or anything so I want to show you the model again so I'm, it looks all over the place but it makes perfect sense here's the boundary vector layer coming in um, I'm dissolving it and it's going to creating a buffer and then I'm taking that buffer and clipping the raster file and that clipped raster file is then reprojected and um, resampled to 30 meter and then I'm clipping it back out again you know using the original state boundary dissolve file to the the NOAA resampled result here and this is what it looks like and that's all I have have a good day